myself. I'm Nicole Fuller, registered dietitian nutritionist. Oh gosh, I've been a dietitian now for over um, 20 years. It's hard to believe that. Um, I've worked in various different fields of nutrition. I've done uh, acute care hospitals, uh, long-term care settings, dialysis. Um, I do a little bit of outpatient um, through the Valley Hospital. And I do um, community nutrition, which is being able to bring nutrition to lots of different groups like yourselves. And I really love and enjoy doing presentations like this. So um, without further ado, let's delve into summer produce and your local farmer's market. Um, I'm so happy you can join, um, join us tonight and that we have the ability like Zoom to do these presentations during this crazy time. Um, so Summer produce, produce and farmers market markets, uh, those two things go hand in hand. And it is such a great topic um, for this time of year because, um, you know, right now we can get some of the best produce out there. And there are just so many farmers markets. Um, I should also um, warn you that, you know, this is at home. I do have three young children in the house. And although they know I'm doing a presentation, they are still three young children, so I apologize for any background noise you might hear. And I also have a dog at home who may or may not make noise too. <laughs> oh, let's see if I can move on. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some common words when we're referring to produce and when we're talking about farmers markets. Um, these terms are going to be some of the main focus of the presentation as it pertains to summer produce, so I wanted to discuss them. The first one um, is local. Well, what does local mean in terms of produce? It basically means the distance from where the food was produced, processed, distributed, and then consumed, that, you know, that distance. The USDA, the United States uh, Department, of, Department of Agriculture, actually has a definition for it. And they define local as um, a measurable distance between food production and consumption that is 400 miles or less. So they put um, a, an actual distance on it, 400 miles or less. For some people that doesn't seem that local, but for the USDA, that is. Uh, another term um, that we're gonna talk about is seasonal. That's a relatively easy term as it refers to produce, produce that's grown the same time of year that you eat them, basic. Um, now, what about sustainable or sustainability as far as produce? Um, sustainable is another word you might hear quite often. It's kind of a little bit of a buzzword nowadays. Uh, basically, farming that aims to be sustainable must protect biodiversity. It must um, be beneficial to plants, animals, and it must also benefit the environment. Sustainable farming also must protect soil fertility for future food production. So that is what sustainable means. Now that we've talked about some of the common terms when referring to produce, I want to go ahead and talk about some of the benefits of eating local, kind of take each term and go through them a little bit further. Um, so for starters, one of the benefits of e eating local means that you're supporting local and regional farmers. By supporting them, that means they get, get to continue what they love to do. Buying local means you're putting your money into the hands of the farmers. Okay, um, so they continue to farm their lands, which means the land stays as a farm, doesn't get turned into another chain store or strip mall. Um, I'm not originally from the Bergen County area, but I know, I believe Tice's farm or, you know, where Tice's corner is now, there's a bunch of shops there. I believe it used to be a huge farm. Um, I know Harold's farm in Glenrock used to be a farm and now it's a um, bottle king. So by eating local, supporting local, you're letting those farmers stay farmers and keep that land as farm. Another benef benefit of eating local is you get to explore new food and this food is picked at the peak of ripeness. Have you ever, you know, really thought about it? It means it actually tastes better when the food is picked at the peak of ripeness. 
Another benefit to eating local is that it's better for the environment. You might not even think about it, but when you buy local, your food is not traveling too far. You know, it's a shorter time between the harvest and your plate. You can literally almost taste the difference from one, from one to the other. Another added benefit of eating local is that your produce is more nutritious. Um, I mean, basically that means it's better for you. Um, the reason for this is because it's picked at the right time. It doesn't travel as far, just as we just mentioned. So it's retaining a little bit more of its nutrients. This is basically a win-win for all the farmers winning because you are supporting their business and you're winning because you're eating food that's more nutritious and food that tastes better, okay? What about eating in season? What are, you know, I know we should choose local produce, but what are the benefits of eating in season? Um, I'll start by saying that when we're talking about local and eating what's in season, they tend to overlap a little bit. So you might see a little, you know, things that we talked about for eating local that overlap in eating what's in season. Um, one of the huge benefits of eating what is in season is that you're saving money. It tends to be less expensive. Um, just think, you know, what we're growing now in New Jersey, we can eat now, you know, let's say um, summer squash, it's being grown in New Jersey. Now you can eat it now, but in the winter, it's not being grown in New Jersey. But if you like summer squash, you could still eat it because it's probably being shipped from, I don't know where, California. So you're saving money because it's not traveling as far. Um, another added benefit for buying and eating produce that's in season is that it is more nutritious. Um, food that's grown and eaten during their appropriate seasons are more nutritionally dense. There's actually been studies done, and there was one study done on broccoli um, testing <clears throat> its nutrition and Broccoli grown during its, during its peak season actually had more vitamin C in it than broccoli that was grown out of its regular season. So it's more nutritious. Not only is seasonal produce more nutritious, but it actually tastes better. Uh, you know, you might love to eat strawberries year round, but it, do, have you ever noticed that when you're eating a strawberry, that's in season that you've either bought at the bought at the farmer's market or picked your own at a pick your own farm or even grown in your own garden that it just tastes better. Um, you can literally taste the difference. So when it comes down to it, um, eating what's in season, you're going to get tastier, more nutritious produce at a better price. It's a win, win, win all the way around if you ask me. <clears throat> Okay, we discuss local, we discuss seasonal, and when, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're referring to produce, but what about sustainable eating? And that brings us to our next topic. <clears throat> so in agriculture, when we talk about sustainability, um, we're talking about farming practices that help conserve our natural resources and that don't have much of an impact on the environment, okay? <clears throat> Sustainable agriculture enables us to produce healthy food um, without compromising the future generation's ability to do the same. We want them to have the same, um, um, be able to produce the same amount, um, same healthy food that we are able to, okay? Sustainable eating is about choosing foods that are healthful to our environment and our bodies. Uh, according to the 2019 EAT Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets um, from Sustainable Food Systems, a global shift um, towards more of a plant-based diet, which would include legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and less animal-based foods, especially less red meat and less processed um, meat, will help feed the world's growing population a nutrition, nutritious and sustainable diet. Um, if you wanna read more about this um, Lancet report, you can go to the website I've put here on the, um, this slide, it's eatforum.org, okay? So if you wanted to read a little bit more about that report. 
Okay, <clears throat> so some tips for sustainability, um, mostly food related, but one non-food related tip for sustainability. Um, the first thing you can grow, uh, <laughs> the first thing you can do for sustainability is grow something on your own. Um, that now when I say grow something on your own, um, it doesn't mean you have to go out and you know start building gardening boxes in your backyard or make a huge garden. It, it could mean, um, I mean, you could certainly do that, but it could mean going to your local gardening center and getting, you know, a potted tomato plant, some herbs, putting it on your deck or your front porch. Um, it's just going to give you the appreciation for what it's like to grow something, you know, from, from scratch and something that you can taste the difference you know, you could taste the difference between a tomato you're growing on your, your deck or in your backyard or in your garden and from one from that you've bought from the grocery store. Other tips for sustainability, <clears throat> shop local. Like we just said, shop local. Uh, we talked about this. Um, shopping local, you're supporting your community by putting money back into the pockets of the local farmers. And it's a way to cut down on your carbon footprint, food's not traveling as far. You're, it's, you know, at the, if you go to the local farmer's market, you know, around here, the farmers are not coming from very far away. Whereas if you were to, you know, go to the grocery store, the tomatoes that you could have got at the farmer's market could be coming from, you know, California or wherever. So it's helping on the carbon footprint. Um, eating seasonally, that's another tip for sustainability. We talked about this one too, but when possible, focus on foods that are in, available in season and close to where you live. Um, this will help support sustainability. And once again, the food is not traveling that far. So you're, you know, cutting down on your carbon footprint again. And last but not least, and this is the one that's not food related, BYOB. And you could use that term however you like it, but for this purpose, it's bring your own bag. And that goes for anywhere you're going, but specifically here, going to the grocery store, going to the farmer's market, um, to pick your own places, breathe new life into the plastic bags that you get at you know, ShopRite, Stop and Shop, wherever, or the brown bags that you get at Whole Foods or cloth bag, whatever kind of bag you have or you like to use, keep it in your trunk. And you're cutting down on litter that's gonna end up in landfills, okay? So let's see, next slide. All right, eating locally grown produce that is in season provides us with good nutrition that we discussed, but despite the health benefits let's be honest, most people don't eat enough produce. We can say it until our faces turn blue, but people just don't seem to eat enough. It's a shame because when um, fruits and vegetables are prepared without adding fats or extra sugars, they're relatively low in calories. So as a result, if you're eating more produce, more fruits and vegetables, it can help you achieve or maintain a healthy weight. Okay. Um, now, Benefits to our health, another one, if you do decide you want to garden on your own, you can actually count this as part of your physical activity. Um, believe it or not, it is recommended that adults who are, I will say, generally fit and have no limiting health conditions, it's recommended that we get 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity per week. 150 minutes translates into about two and a half, I apologize, someone is interrupting me, um, it translates into about two and a half hours. So believe it or not, heavy gardening, if you're someone that likes to garden or if you just built a garden, heavy gardening, gardening is seen as not a moderate, but a vigorous intensity activity, okay? This can help strengthen your muscles, um, and you can combine it with the moderate activity that you're doing during, during, doing during the week. So you can, it'll add up quickly to 150 minutes. I do, however, re recommend always talk to your doctor um, or physician before starting any kind of high intensity or moderate intensity physical activity, if that's not something you're, you're doing. But heavy, heavy gardening can certainly add to it. As you can see here, you can burn up to 330 calories per hour with heavy gardening. Who knew? Uh, and while heavy gardening 
can certainly keep you active. Um, it can also benefit you with stress relief, okay? It's a great stress reliever. It's kind of like that stop and smell the roses sort of feeling. It gets you outside with nature, into the fresh air. You're taking part in uh, growing something, growing food for yourself or food that you can share with family and friends, okay? All right, so how much should we be eating? That is the proverbial question. You know, we're, we're constantly told, eat more fruits and vegetables, eat more produce. Um, so what does that mean exactly? What, it, what does that look like? Well, um, according to the USDA, um, my plate recommendations, and when I say the my plate recommendations, another great website to look at is called choosemyplate.gov. Um, you can see this graphic there, they have a great campaign, um, but according to them, the recommendations for fruit and vegetables for men and women, um, for men, you can see fruit, it's about two cups a day, women, it's about one and a half cups for vegetables for men is, um, like two and a half to three cups while women is two to two and a half cups. Okay. This does vary from person to person. And if you do go to that choosemyplate.gov, you can actually input some of your information and it'll give you a general idea of where you fall as far as um, portions you should be getting a day. Now, what does one cup of fruit look like? Well, one cup of fruit is equivalent to one cup of, you know, fresh fruit, um, you know, berries, whatever, cantaloupe, melon, um, or one cup of 100% fruit juice, or a half a cup of dried fruit. Those are equivalent to one cup of fruit. As for vegetables, in general, one cup of raw or cooked vegetables, or two cups of raw leafy greens can be considered one cup of vegetables, all right? Moving on. Okay, so here you can see the choosemyplate.gov. It's a great website, great resource. Um, it's a great campaign. Um, so the dietary guidelines for Americans for 2020 to 2025 is, so another way to look at it, instead of counting, you know, how many cups a day I should be getting, make half your plate fruits and vegetables. If you're not a big fruit eater at lunch and dinner, I know not a lot of people are, what I tell people, make half your plate vegetables at lunch and dinner. Just go with that. Half of them, um, half the plate vegetables. Breakfast, maybe do, you know, a quarter of your plate fruits. And you can incorporate vegetables in your breakfast easily. You know, avocado, if you're doing scrambled egg whites or scrambled eggs, you could throw some spinach in there. Um, anyway, half your plate. Um, you can keep, you know, if it's um, food is fruit or produce or vegetables are not in season, you can always keep frozen or canned um, fruit and vegetables. Or, you know, um, if you're doing fruit that's canned, make sure you get the fruit that's packed in its own juices, not in syrup to cut down on, on added sugars. Um, if you're doing canned vegetables, you want to make sure you're getting the low sodium canned vegetables. You want to also try and focus on whole fruits. Um, and when, what I mean by that, I mean, while juice, one cup of 100% fruit juice is equivalent to one serving, it really is not providing um, much in terms of nutrition. You're, so focus on eating the whole fruit and vary your vegetables. Try, try new types of vegetables, things that you wouldn't normally eat. And this is a great time of year to do that because if you go to a local farmer's market, there's likely lots of vegetables there that you normally don't try. So bury it, try different preparations, experiment um, with ways to add vegetables to your diet. If you have a sandwich, instead of the regular um, <clears throat> lettuce and tomato, try cucumber. Uh, sliced on top of the sandwich or some avocado or even some pickled carrots. Um, those are just some ideas. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard the term eat the rainbow. At the top, I put eat, eat in color in New Jersey because you know, I got the rainbow colors and these are some um, fruits and vegetables that are actually grown in New Jersey. But the term um, behind eat the rainbow doesn't just mean eat more fruits and vegetables, but to eat a variety of them from all different colors. The reason that we say that is because the colors of the produce actually mean something. <clears throat> 
fruits and vegetables contain something called phytonutrients. And there are literally thousands of different phytonutrients. And it's precisely those, the phytonutrients that give fruits and vegetables their unique colors and tastes. Phytonutrients have strong anti-cancer and anti-heart disease effects. So that's why we often say eat the rainbow because each phytonutrient does a different thing. So eat the rainbow <laughs> or eat in color in New Jersey. And speaking of New Jersey, I'm sure many of you have seen this Jersey Fresh logo. Did you know that it was started in 1984? When you do see this logo, it means that it was grown in New Jersey. You can see this logo in many places. You can even see it at um, you know, a regular supermarket. Um, it means that that item was grown in New Jersey. New Jersey actually grows more than 100 fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Um, <clears throat> and we are the top 10 producers in the country for blueberries, peaches, bell peppers, squash, tomatoes, and cranberries. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I'm, I'm pretty proud to say I'm a New Jerseyan now. Um, you can definitely check out more information on, the, on this. Go to findjerseyfresh.com. It, it has wonderful information all about New Jersey, farmers, um, affiliated grocery stores that, that proudly show off the Jersey Fresh logo. <clears throat> so I also wanted to give you an idea of a quick list of farmers markets that I've found in the area um, just by a quick search uh, in Bergen County from Englewood to Ridgewood. If you live near any of these areas and you want to check out one of the farmers markets, just do a quick Google search. Um, I have not been to many of these, but I have been to the Ramsey Bur um, farmer's market and I've been to the Ridgewood one. Um, you know, I'm not trying to pick favorites, but I will say the Ramsey one is amazing. And while you can find amazing produce at farmer's markets, a lot of them you'll find unique things like um, cheeses, fresh baked goods, breads, um, even uh, there was a time at the Ramsey market where there was a gentleman from Long Island who would catch fish and bring it to the farmer's market. So it was just amazing. Um, and I had to dedicate an entire slide to Atmos Farm. Um, you really cannot get much more local than this when I talk about supporting local farms. Um, they are Bergen County's only produce and <clears throat> poultry farm, and they've been around for 85 years and they're still growing strong. Um, if you've never visited, I highly recommend going. You can't get much more local than that. You can't get fresher than that. Some of the sometimes you will little, literally get what they've harvested in the morning in their indoor market. So you're buying fresh from <clears throat> fresh from the harvest you can literally taste the difference. Um, if you want to check out what they, on their website, they might even tell you what they have available at that time. Um, you can go to www.admosfarm.com and it, they don't just sell produce. They have little knickknacks and stuff. And certain times of years, they have pies and cheeses and meals. So it's a great place to go. And they have fresh eggs too, which is amazing. So now let's see how we can bring those goodies from the farm to our tables. I did a little study for you all, and I have a list of what's being grown in New Jersey in July right now. I don't know if you knew all the things that are available, but the, this is what is available in New Jersey right now, okay? So a lot of what's on this list you might not normally eat, but this is the time when you can go to your local farmer's market. These will a lot of these items will likely be there because this is what's being grown now. Um, this is the time when you can, you know, try something new, okay? Um, berries, right now, um, raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries are being grown in New Jersey. So if you're, you know, not a huge fan or haven't really tried much with them, now's the time. And speaking of berries, so how would you choose the best berries? Well, you want to look at the container, make sure that the container um, doesn't have stains in it. It's not wet. Um, you also, you know, want to look at the, take a quick peek at the berries. If you see any moldy ones, I would kind of leave it there. You can't really touch the berries, but you want to get a good idea if they look kind of plump and firm. Um, berries 
obviously aren't in season all the time. If you do go for frozen berries, I would take the bag and kind of shake it and feel it. If there's a big lump inside, it's like, likely means that it was defrosted a little bit. Um, so I would not choose those bags. When you get home and you wanna store the berries, um, look at them, you wanna take out the damaged berries because if you have any spoiling ones in the bottom, it's likely gonna ruin the whole batch. The best place to keep them in your refrigerator is the, um, apologize for that, that's my dog trying to get in. Um, the best place for these is in your produce drawer. So keep the berries in the produce drawer. Blackberries like to be uncovered in the refrigerator, so leave those uncovered. And while berries can last um, an entire week, the best time to eat them is within the first three days for the best nutrition. But that doesn't mean you have to, it's just, you know, those first three days is the best. Now you're getting ready to eat those berries. Rinse them under cold water before you eat them. Um, while you certainly can eat them plain, you can add them to so many things, some low fat Greek yogurt or low fat plain yogurt. Um, if you want a sweet treat at night, instead of going for chocolate syrup or whipped cream, put some berries on it. Add it to your whole grain cereal in the morning. I put it actually in my oatmeal. Um, you can add some berries to salads or, you know, put make a smoothie in the morning. Uh, they definitely taste best when they're in season, but let's say you go to a pick your own um, farm or you buy sometimes some of the grocery stores sell like crates of the berries when they're in season. If you can't go through them fast enough, you can always freeze them. I find it's best to put them out on a cookie sheet and place that in the freezer and have it kind of um, so they're a little separated. If you don't have enough space in your freezer, just put them in a freezer safe container. But if you can spread them out, have them freeze like that and then switch it to a freezer safe uh, container. Now, summer squash, summer squash right now, you could call a zucchini, the green, uh, the green ones, a lot of time people call them zucchini. The summer squash is in season in New Jersey right now. Um, there are so many varieties of summer squash, um, different shapes and sizes, so try them all. Um, when you're picking out squash, uh, the best way to pick out squash is pick the smaller ones. The smaller ones tend to have um, more flavor, more taste. Um, you want to make sure that they're firm. They're not, you know, like mushy or that you can move them around. You want the bright color, uh, you know, really look at it. If there's nicks or bruises or, you know, mushy parts, leave that, you know, there, you want a firm squash. You can just store them in a in the refrigerator out of a container in the produce drawer, or if it's in a plastic bag, I would just make sure that the air can circulate through it. Um, again, they can last for a week, just like the berries, but it's best to use them, you know, within three to four days. Prepare them. Honestly, wash them. You can eat the skins. I eat the skins. You can peel them if you, you know, want to, but the skins are just fine. And there are so many ways you can do squash. Um, you can make muffins. You can make breads. You can put it in pancake mix or waffle mix. You can find recipes on stuffing them. Um, you can grill them. I personally like mine a little sauteed in a little olive oil with um, some onion, um, you know, not where it's not too mushy. You know, I like them still a little firm and I can, I also eat it raw. You can, you know, just cut it so it's little circles and dip it in some hummus or some light, you know, let's say light ranch dip. So what are the takeaway messages from today? Uh, well, for starters, go grow something yourself. And again, it doesn't have to be a huge garden. It could be tomatoes. Um, they're easy enough, you know, try that. Um, talk to the farmers. When you go to the farmer's market, um, talk to them. Or when you stop at a farm stand, or if you go to a local farm like Abma's, or, you know, you go to a pick your own farm, talk to them, talk to them about their produce, ask about how they um, keep their farm sustainable. Um, make, make your produce the star of the meal. Um, there's another campaign. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of it, but it's called Meatless Mondays. You can go to the website, meatlessmonday.com. You can start with that. Say every Monday for dinner, I'm going to make the vegetable the star, star of the meal. Um, 
that way you can try new recipes and add a little bit more produce to your diet. Another takeaway would be shop local and try new foods that's in season. That's kind of been the theme of this whole presentation, right? And then last but not least, BYOB to the market. Bring that bag with you, okay? So I also wanted to give you an idea of some additional resources. Um, definitely the find um, you, the findjerseyfresh.com. Not only can you find your nearest farmer's market, it's very the website is very user-friendly, but you can find what supermarkets carry the um, Jersey Fresh logo. Um, they have recipes on there as well. Uh, you can consider joining a CSA, a community supported agriculture. Um, if you want to know more about what that is or one that's near you, you can check out the website I put up here, the localharvest.org backslash CSA backslash. Um, a CSA, uh, what you do is you pay a fee at the beginning of the growing season. So before the farmers have really um, planted anything, the, the farmers use uh, the funds for operating expenses on, you know, for the season. And in return, at the end, the members get a weekly or bi-weekly or once a month um, portion of the produce, okay? If you want some more information on nutrition and recipes on what to do with all that lovely produce that you're gonna go and get at the farmer's markets, I put a bunch of websites here foodhero.org, myplate.gov, that's um, the USDA website, lots of great resources there, eatright.org, uh, find Jersey Fresh again, and Abma's Farm. And with um, all that being said, I wanted to open it up to any questions, any might have. Um, I really appreciate your time for listening to me this evening. It was my pleasure speaking to you about all things summer produce and farmers markets. Let's okay, see. so if we do have a question, um, one and a half cups of fruit seems like so little. I, I eat about five times that. Um, Why is it so low? Well, this is for women likely 60 and over that recommendation. And I, I would also plug in your, you can go to the choosemyplate.gov and put in your height, your weight, your gender, your activity level. It might tell you to eat, you know, two cups. Um, it's probably low because it, while you do need a lot of you, it is fruit is good. Um, you know, if you're diabetic for some people, you should not be eating that much fruit. Um, I generally tend pe to tell people to stick to two cups a day. So what would be um, a cup of like, say, like if you're doing a whole food, like an orange or a banana or an apple, what would be a serving of that? So, okay. So apples, um, a serving of an apple is about the size of a baseball. Okay. Um, if you go to the grocery stores nowadays, some of the apples are the size of grapefruits. Um, I mean, while fruit is great, produce is great. Um, you know, if I'm not going to say if you eat too much of it, but if you're, if you're a healthy weight and you're not diabetic, I don't think it, there's any harm in eating more fruit than that. But if you're diabetic and you're having, you know, or you're pre-diabetic, um, or insulin resistance, or you're having trouble losing weight, I would limit the fruit okay, and go okay. more vegetable heavy. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions about summer produce? Yes, Ramsey is great. It is, yes. I go there often. It's a fun place to go. They have a lot of uh, tents and they, it's they huge. sell honey and, and pickles and jams mm -hmm. and all kinds of great stuff. You know, and you can bring your it. dog there and mm -hmm. it, it's really- um, Sometimes they have live music, don't they? Yes, yes. So any questions, anybody? Oh, no questions. Okay, all right. Um, well, next week we're gonna see Nicole again. A very popular topic, portioning your plate. I know a lot of us um, struggle with uh, serving sizes and um, 
eating too much. Uh, we do have a question. Um, what herbs go best with vegetables? I know exactly the answer. Whatever herbs you like, <laughs> honestly. It depends on um, what your tastes are. Usually when I'm making zucchini um, or you know summer squash, if I'm sauteing it, I use dried thyme. Um, but you, it, you know, it honestly comes down to what flavorings and tastes you like. Cause if I told somebody that cilantro goes great with, you know, in their salsa, someone, you know, some people think cilantro tastes like soap. So it's whatever you like and enjoy experiment. That's the best way to, to see what, you know, anything. Right. Leslie said she just har harvested her first vegetables in her garden. Oh, yay. <laughs> Doesn't it feel so great? It does. And it does taste different. A tomato out of the garden tastes so different than a tomato so from the grocery store. So good. Michelle is asking, should husks on corn be taken off when storing? Or should you take them off? So <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, you'll probably find different... Um, answers, but I've heard that it's better to store corn with the husks on and remove it prior to cooking. Mm -hmm. Or if you're